All right. Thank you all. It is at the top of the hour. It's 10 o'clock here Pacific Standard Time. So I'm going to I'm going to get going. Um, make sure. Change slides. Okay, cool. All right. So hi, everyone, and welcome in. Uh, my name is Gabe Verdusco. And I will be talking today for about, and then, uh, so hopefully that does pertain to you because um, on February 13th, we'll be having a webinar on Eastern scale management. So um, I did talk last week on invasive species for the West, and it seemed we had um, quite a few people that were uh, interested on uh, invasives uh, nationwide. <laughs> so it's so a quick safety brief. Please check surroundings for trip hazards, check for inclement weather. And uh, if you're watching from your vehicle, please be parked here on the web. As we are getting a lot of rain right now. So um, yeah, be safe out there, drive slow. A quick intro, uh, if you weren't in my uh, presentation last week, just uh, again about myself. Um, so I am Rainbow Ecosciences Regional Arborist Advisor. And internally, internally, that's the uh, we've gave it the name arborologist. And so I support our clients uh, for the Southwest and companies. And I'm based in Orange County. I help with uh, technical support, training, training on our products, equipment, and then just anything plant health care related. My favorite thing so far has been supporting your plant pest issues or your pathogen emails and just being able to support you on, and help you on, on those issues. Um, I have a few certifications with the ISA, DPR, and then I grew up near Fresno and went to Fresno State and studied plant sciences and uh, have extensive experience with uh, working at the USDA and then as a horticulturalist. And then previous to Rainbow, I was working for the Cooperative Extension working with invasive species. Specifically, uh, our, our focus was on the shot hole borer and gold spotted oak borer. So type your, so just a housekeeping slide, type your questions in the Q&A box using uh, your control panel presentation. So I'm gonna do my best a bit of time here. This webinar is, and then this webinar is worth one ISA CEU. So if you weren't able to enter your ISA certification number uh, during registration, please type that into the Q&A. Very brief, Rainbow Ecoscience is a nationwide plant healthcare company. And we average about 1,200 tech support calls per year. Uh, we average 150 research trials per year and that's nationwide. Right now, uh, one I'm working on is um, some drought trials where we have a few uh, locations here in SoCal and then some trials in NorCal. And then we have eight core values that you see listed here. I like that we are science-based. So we're giving you, um, you know, backed uh, science protocols. So for today's learning objective, I want you to become familiar with scale insects and their issues in the landscape, ability to identify hard and soft scales and why that's important. And then lastly, what products you're going to be able to use for certain species and the timing of those products. And um, won't go into all of the scale, but just a few that I, I chose um, to, to explain to you. So what are scales? Here you see the taxonomy of insects and scale is in the order of the Hemiptera. And that order is the same as leafhoppers, true bugs, cicadas, aphids, white flies, adelgids. And these are gonna be your piercing and sucking insects. So there are fa five families of scale. That's gonna be the soft and the armored, the felty scale, mealy bugs, and giant scales. All of these will have an impact with armored and soft being the most common. Scales are immobile, they're wingless and lack a separate head or 
other recognizable body parts, cause, um, some discoloration, distortion of leaves on the shoots, and then plants can appear sometimes water stressed. High populations of some scale species can cause branch and terminal dieback and reduce that plant growth. And then depending on your infestation level and your client's tolerance is will determine your BMP, so your best management practice. So next is gonna be some slides on their impact on property. So you're managing some sites and you're dealing with scale. So here you see some trees leafing out and image. So being proactive, you'd wanna go take a closer look. Why? Questioning why hasn't it leaked out? What's going on? What's wrong? And upon closer inspection, you see that it has an infestation of scale. So this infestation of scale has weakened its overall health. And that is why it has led uh, it to grow slowly. And then these scales, they can be easily overlooked, right? Because they just image how well um, that scale actually blends in. And then another example, here we see crepe myrtles uh, on the right. We have one that's really robust and healthy. And then at the same site, um, this other one on the, and that's actually from scale. So their ability to, to insert that, that straw-like mouth part that they have into the bark allows the scale to extract uh, contents and it's going to extract them from the plant cells. It's going to extract from that vascular system. And that, in that case, it's, it's um, decreased the crepe myrtle's overall health. And then some other impacts. So soft scale can create this excrement. And then it's, it's basically a sticky honeydew. Uh, and then eventually will develop into the sooty mold. And that here in this image, it has covered that leaf surface. So here you see that black mold-like covering on the leaf surface. And that sticky excrement can cover any surface that is beneath them. So as you see in this image, uh, this tree has the soft scale. It's developing that uh, sticky excrement, which is then dropping onto um, these surfaces here. So onto the vehicle, onto the sidewalk, and... Um, a little bit difficult to tell, but it is dropping onto the vehicle here too as well. So that's going to be the, become a nuisance, right, for your homeowner, your property owner. Um, so managing that pest, then, you know, it'll remove that. So here I'm going to go into about a little bit about soft scales and armor scales. So soft scales can grow up to a quarter of an inch long and they're gonna have smooth, cottony, waxy surfaces. At maturity, uh, soft scales are gonna be a little bit uh, larger and more rounded than the armored scales. Soft scales and other types will feed on the phloem sap. And as I had mentioned, they excrete that uh, sticky honeydew and it's gonna drip on the surfaces underneath and then uh, develop that blackish sooty mold. And then um, some soft scales will uh, we'll see commonly are black scales, uh, browns, browns, excuse me, brown soft scales. I've been also getting a lot of uh, folks asking about magnolia, magnolia scale. We do have a uh, rainbow. Turley has developed a nice new protocol for that uh, treatment protocol. And then uh, here we see uh, armor scales. And they're going to have a flat and plate-like shell that is less than one-eighth of an inch in diameter. And then the actual body is underneath that waxy shell. And so if you remove that waxy shell, the body uh, of the insect will actually remain on the plant. And then uh, how to differentiate fr from the two? Armor scales are not going to produce that uh, honeydew. So most of their life is not mobile. And then they can have several generations per year, and that's going to uh, allow for that extended crawler emergence. And I'll go into details about that. And then they will overwinter as nymphs and adults. And then some of the armored scales include uh, cycad scale, unanimous, oyster shell, and San Jose. In the next slide, uh, so 
here's our rainbow scale toolbox and it's um, this application methods. So uh, once you've determined what scale you're dealing with, right, you would then want to decide what is going to be the appropriate management tool. So that's going to uh, vary on the site you're at, the size of the tree and your client's expectations. So remember, it's important to know what species of scale you're, you're trying to manage, what tool in that toolbox to use. So there's the uh, foliar spray, the bark spray, the tree injection, and then that soil application. And then a, a little bit about the life cycle. Another unique attribute of scales is their unique life cycle. So some of the species move only during their first instar phase or that crawler phase. And this is important because during this period, crawlers are going to be sensitive to product applications. And the next phase is the future instar. And those lose their legs and form that protective barrier. And that's that waxy shell or covering that I had mentioned. And then that's going to actually help in repelling uh, general time period from A to first instar phase. That crawler phase is going to uh, be it's going to be helpful when uh, you're you're applying your treatment. So timing is very helpful. So knowing the timing is going to be very helpful. So here we see the full rainbow scale toolbox for soft scale management. And this is going to give you the product and help you with approximate time. Uh, what month to apply the product. And then oh, by Fenthern has been that industry standard. But here we see some of our core products uh, of scale, first off scale listed. If you uh, look at the chart, peroxide, um, that active ingredient is pyropo pyropoxifen, excuse me. And this can be applied as a foliar spray from about March to July. And then Proxet is also applied as uh, a spray at crawler. So you want to spray that at crawler emergence. And what I like about Proxet is that it is more ecologically friendly. And that's, in fact, because it is a juvenile hormone mimic. So this means it breaks the, the scales pest life cycle and it, and it won't cause mortality to those natural enemies and those beneficial pollinators. We won't harm the bees. That's really important. So it is a non-neonicotinoid option. And then uh, Transtech uh, 70 WSP, you see here, it is it is the um, only systemic in insecticide that's gonna control both soft and hard shell scales. And it can be applied uh, by foliar, bark spray, soil injection. And then uh, what's nice about this is the uptake is, is relatively quick in that um, you only need to apply two to three weeks prior to uh, crawler emergence. There is the uh, Transtect infusible. Transtect is actually going to be um, that dinotefuron. And then that trans, going back to Transtect infusible, it is it can be a low volume direct trunk injection option. And that's going to help reduce uh, your applicator exposure reduces environmental uh, exposure. And then you can actually apply that within a few days of crawler emergence and because that is a direct injection into the, uh, the vascular tissue of that tree. So I would check the label on this. It is not registered for quite a few states in the West. So just be, be sure when, when considering that as an option. The soil applied, and that is our imidacolprid, and that can be applied in the spring in the, or in the fall. And that takes a little bit longer for uptake. So uh, again, you see there is, uh, it can be 30 to 100 days, excuse me, 120 days um, that you want to apply this prior to crawler emergent, crawler emergence. So uh, not on the list is I take 10%, and that actually is works as a an injection for soft scales. And then uh, lastly, horticulture oil, that can be used as a dormant spray through the, and through the growing season. It is effective on deciduous plants and, and other broadleaf green, evergreens. And then you would want to spray hort oil 
on the plant parts where that scale is going to occur, right? So you spray it um, typically on the twigs and then spray it on that underside of leaves. Uh, that's where that hort oil will be affected. So here is this, the toolbox for armored scale. And again, this is uh, what product you wanna use, approximate time period, and then uh, the application method. So uh, uh, if you look at this chart, uh, is not on this list because it's not effective for armored scale. So uh, knowing that is, is helpful. And then also potential to cause secondary uh, outbreaks. So that might um, develop uh, spider wounds as a secondary outbreak. So now I'm gonna go on in through a, a few species of common uh, uh, armored scale and soft scales and some management options. First one here is obscure, obscure scale. And this is an armored scale. So its hosts are generally chestnut, oak, pecan, and it's given its name obviously because it is pretty obscure. And uh, the obscure scale will overwinter as mated females, and those crawlers will uh, hatch in late spring and be active for almost two months. So this is gonna give you a good amount of time to treat uh, during that phase. And then the males emerge in late summer to mate. I do have growing degrees, growing degree days on here. It generally might not apply to a lot of the folks in the West because as you know, um, we have so many microclimates and um, some areas it just stays warm uh, year round, especially down here in, in SoCal. Um, it stays pretty warm. So here's our team has developed uh, this nice management guide and it's on um, common. I'm going to go in, into more on common specific species, scale species, and that's the obscure scale. And that's going to help dial in the application timing and the products. And then for, for obscure scale, we can see here, uh, you can apply the foliar sprays, the tree injections and soil applications. Next is calico scale, and this is the soft scale. So this can occur on, on many deciduous trees, and it usually it likes being on shaded plant parts. And that liquid amber is is a very is one of its preferred hosts, right? So, and then some other occasional hosts include apricot, box elder, maple, um, plum, and walnut. And then the adult female you see in this photo. Uh, Uh, it's given its name because of that calico coloration. And then you see our management guide for calico. And you can use all the application methods for this scale. And again, um, you see our, our Zytec uh, can cause that uh, spider mite flare up. So keep that in mind. And then for Lacanium scale, this has uh, several species uh, within that, that same genus. So um, there's that European fruit, Lacanium, and that's generally the most common, and that feeds on many many deciduous hosts, such as, as uh, your almond, your alders, cottonwoods, walnut, just to name a few. And then there's the frosted scale, and those hosts include the ash, birch, the elm, and it's given its name because uh, how to how to identify frosted scale. It has that it's covered by a white waxy powder, so. Um, it's given that name frosted. And then oak lacanium is the most common. And of course, it's going to be on our post live oaks and other oaks. And with lacanium scale, again, you have multiple options here. Uh, very, all the uh, application, really great tools that we have here to help you uh, manage these, these scales. Next is irregular pine, and that's a serious insect pest for our various pines, especially Monterey pine. And these scales are gonna suck and feed on pine needles and small twigs. And they, it being a soft scale, is gonna excrete that honeydew, and then that black sooty mold grows. Large infestations actually can cause needles to turn yellow or brown. They will drop prematurely, 
and then it can really weaken the trees and actually kill young pines. So I got about 10 minutes here. I want to save some time for questions. Here is the uh, irregular pine scale uh, treatment guide. And then we have tulip tree scale, and that's uh, a serious problem on our tulip trees, our magnolias, heavy infestations will weaken or kill young trees. And then all, on older trees, you'll see that high populations can cause, actually, can cause limb dieback, and then actually um, sometimes can cause death of those tulip, tulip trees. And again, we have a nice uh, tulip tree scale management guide. And that is that soft scale. You can do your foliar sprays, uh, bark spray, tree injections, and soil applications. So a quick wrap-up. Uh, scales insects have varied and interesting life cycles. Knowing the species of, of scale is important for successful management protocols. So choosing the appropriate systemic product and application method, method will offer offer excellent control. And we have these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the image on the right is a scale insect management guide that we have, uh, our, our team has developed and it's very handy, it's very useful. So you can actually download that from our website if you wanna dive further into that. It, it's it's really, really well illustrated and, and really helps um, basically a lot of the things that I've covered. And we have so many added benefits for, for you. We have tech support. We're going to be uh, your, your center. We have the e-learning. We have so many more webinars that we're offering throughout the year. So uh, Rainbow is, is, you know, we're doing a lot more for, for, for everyone. And then here's that ISA CEU code. We're getting at about uh, seven minutes here left. And then if you didn't add your ISA, ISA number when you registered, please add, please have your first and last name and your ISA number in the chat. <clears throat> oh, let me leave that up for, or actually come back to that. Please reach out. We can. Uh, I know there's so many different types of scale out there. I can. We can work together to identify it and create uh, a treatment protocol. If we already don't have one, we we'll probably already have it developed. Uh, just this was only 30 minutes. So uh, again, I appreciate you all for joining in. And uh, this is my second uh, webinar, so hopefully get better and smoother at this as I uh, do more talks. I'm really enjoying just educating you all on the insects. So I'm gonna leave this ISAC you code and then I'm gonna go to some questions here and see what everyone had. I can bring it up. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Q and A. All right. Got a lot of moves. People are entering. Getting folks saying the audio is super glitchy. Sorry again. It is raining a lot, so maybe my Wi Fi wasn't that good today. Okay, so the first one is how long is the residual on Proxite? Uh, that was Mora, Moriah. I'm going to have to follow up with you on that. I don't know the uh, residual on Proxite. Let's see. We dealt with Phantasma scale. Uh, Christopher, I don't have any experience with Phantasma scale. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of it, but... Um, be happy to look into it for you and, and follow up and see um, where you're dealing with that or um, where that's based at. I definitely, I like to learn about that. 
Uh, Tara's asking if a hand lens is recommended for identification. Uh, totally. I, I use this. I mean, these bugs are so small. I use a hand lens for, for any pest. Um, I'd use it for um, shot ogre when you try. And they're so small. Uh, really helps for sure. Will we get a copy of this recording? Chris, yes, we'll get a, a copy of this recording after this. And then that was it. So a couple folks I'm going to follow up with. Uh, sorry if the Wi-Fi is wasn't the best today. I'm wondering if it's just weather. But um, again, got four minutes left. Let's see. Do you need, Tara's asking, do you need any type of certification to apply the product? Let's see, I've listed. Yes, Tara. Um, well, I know that for, in fact, for California, you do need it to have your pesticide applicators, either certificate or license, or there's, you know, so QAC, QAL, PCA, you do want to have those to um, be able to apply these products. So you can't just, because you need to understand that, you know, you need the proper personal protective equipment. You need to understand how to read the label. So it's very important to um, be sure that you are certified by the Department of Pesticide Regulation. And then looking into, I don't know for other states, but I would assume you would need to be you know, certified as well. And then let's see, is there any efficacy? Okay. Um, what was the next one? Is there any efficacy of proxite during new crawler stages? Carrie, I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm going to have to follow up with you and ask um, team here at Rainbow on that one. And then Will's asking, does hort oil help knock it down to lessen the population later in the season during crawler stage? It's hort oil. Actually do a combination of hort oil and other products, and that's that will help um, with your doing a dual combo. Um, I don't know. No. Don't know if it will help lessen the population later in the season, though. Um, I think there are some. Obviously, you can you can apply in fall, and then it will help um, when coming into the spring. So, like our uh, Zytec. And then, let's see, I think that was it. Well, again, folks, thanks for joining in. I'm sorry if that Wi-Fi was a little uh, bad. I um, and then I will follow up some of the folks here that have that have. Um, answered, asked some questions. And yeah, thank you. We're at two minutes left. So good timing. All right. Uh, thanks again.